Hi, today we're going to take a look at how to subtract a whole number from a fraction. Before getting into it, never forget that in a fraction, like this one, the top number is the numerator and the bottom number is the denominator. Nice! Are you ready for the first example? In this example, we need to subtract 19 fifths minus 3. As you can see, we have a fraction and a whole number. To find the difference, first, we copy the fraction 19 fifths. 19 fifths. Perfect. Next, we have the minus sign. Pay attention, the key to solve this problem is to focus on the denominator of the fraction, 5 in this case. In the next step, we convert the whole number 3 to a fraction with a denominator of 5. To convert 3 to a fraction with a denominator of 5, we multiply 3 by 5, and then we divide this product by 5. Once again, to convert 3 to a fraction with a denominator of 5, we multiply 3 by 5 and then we divide this product by 5. Why have we done that? To work with two fractions with the same denominator. Here we have 19 fifths, 19 fifths, we continue with the minus sign, now we multiply 3 times 5 and give us 15. 15, the denominator stays the same, 5 come over here. In the following step, we subtract these two fractions with the same denominator. We have 5 on the left, 5 on the right, we can put 5 on this side, and we continue by subtracting the numerators. 19 minus 15 give us 4. That's it. In that way, 19 fifths minus 3 give us 4 fifths. At this point, we should remember the proper fractions. A proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is less than the denominator, the bottom number. 4 fifths is a proper fraction, given that the numerator 4 is less than the denominator 5. Nice! Let's continue with the second example. In this example, we're going to subtract 15 halves minus 4. Once again, we have a fraction and a whole number. To find the difference, first, we copy the fraction 15 halves. 15 halves. We continue with the minus sign. We already know that the key to solve this problem is to focus on the denominator of the fraction, 2 in this case. Next, we convert the whole number 4 to a fraction with a denominator of 2. To convert 4 to a fraction with a denominator of 2, we multiply 4 by 2, and then we divide this product by 2, once again, ok? To convert the whole number 4 to a fraction with a denominator of 2, we multiply 4 by 2, and then we divide this product by 2. Now we have two fractions with the same denominator. 15 halves, 15 halves, minus, minus, 4 times 2, give us 8. The denominator stays the same, 2, come over here. In the following step, we need to subtract these two fractions with the same denominator. We have 2 over here, 2 over here, we can put 2 one more time, we continue by subtracting the numerators, 15 minus 8, give us 7, 7, that is correct. In that way, 15 halves minus 4, give us 7 halves. But there is something else. Before, we talk about the proper fractions. Now, we're going to see the improper fractions. Pay attention. An improper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is greater than or equal to the denominator, the bottom number. 7 halves is an improper fraction, given that the numerator 7 is greater than the denominator 2. Also, we can convert the improper fractions to mixed numbers. Do you remember how to do that? So, how many times does 2 go into 7? How many times does 2 go into 7? Well, 2 goes into 7 3 times. And then we multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. To get 7, we need to add 1. One more time. 3 times 2 is 6. To get 7, we need to add 1. Finally, the denominator stays the same. 2 come over here. Perfect. Therefore, 15 halves minus 4 give us 7 halves or 3 and 1 half. That's all for today. If you want to learn more about fractions, check out this playlist. And here you have another video. Have a good one and see you next lesson. Bye!